All right, let's go ahead and get back into the swing of things here. Uh, when we're talking about quantization of charge, remember, it's it's kind of a fancy word for just, let's put a number to, to charge. So rather than something that's just, you know, positive or just negative, how positive, how negative is it? All right, so let's take a look at number one. All right, for part A, it says there's there's 5 million excess electrons stuck to your sweater because they have an overall charge of this negative 8 times 10 to the negative 13 coulombs. Remember, C stands for coulombs. What's the charge of a single electron? Generally, we'll never end up solving a problem like this because we already know the charge of a single electron is this. The only reason this question's here is to show that we can use this formula to solve for multiple different variables. All right, so... The reason that I do 5 times 10 to the 6th for 5 million is it just, it's just a little bit easier to, to write. And then when we go to divide by these two numbers in scientific notation, we can kind of have an estimation of what, it's, um, what our exponent should be. Because remember, dividing by a number in scientific notation is the same as subtracting or a shortcut way is subtracting the exponent. So when I do negative 8 times 10 to the negative 13th divided by 5 times 10 to the 6th, because I'm trying to get e by itself, I know that my exponent should be somewhere around negative 19th. Um, the reason I say somewhere around that is because, of course, based on what this number is to begin with, I might end up with something that's a little bit... Um, more a little bit less than times 10 to the negative 19th but at least i know i'm somewhere around there um, in my in my final answer so when i do go to do my division negative 8 times 10 to the negative 13th divided by 5 times 10 to the 6th i do end up with an exponent that is within uh, the realm of reason and i also find that my electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th which in this case, I won't normally be able to check it like this, but in this case I can because I already know the charge of one electron. I did come out with that answer for the charge of an electron, so I know I'm good to go. Right, let's take a look at letter B. You collect an additional 500,000 electrons. What's your new charge? So we can't just solve for the charge of these 500 electrons and then say we're 500,000 electrons and say we're good to go. We've got to realize that this is an additional 500,000. So we have this to begin with. That was our that was our original charge. That's why I have this charge from before. Now we're adding on an additional charge of whatever 500,000 electrons is, and then I can figure out what my total charge is. So add the two together to get my total. All right, so the part that we're really um, concerned with right now, because again, we've this part's from before, I'm collecting the additional 500,000 electrons. 500,000 electrons is the same as 5 times 10 to the 5th. Um, just a real brief scientific notation review. Remember, scientific notation is always an integer followed by a decimal, followed by however many decimal places we want to go. In this case, we don't need to go to any, but I'll just do 5.0 for the heck of it times how many places over we need to move our decimal. So 1, 2, three, four, five. So that'd be times 10. It's always times 10 to the fifth. So that's why I have this here because it is the same as 500,000. If you put 500,000 here in standard notation, like just literally negative, or sorry, literally 500,000, that would work out as well. And then I multiply it by the charge of an electron. Remember in class, we learned how to set this as a variable in the calculator so that you don't have to constantly type in you know, negative 1.6e, which it takes place to the times 10 to the, and then type in negative 19 after that, and you don't have to worry about parentheses if you don't use the E key or all that other sort of stuff. So it just makes it a ton easier if you did store this as a variable. I may show that in a future video. So we come out with, after multiplying these two numbers together, this 5 times 10 to the 5th, which is 500,000, and then multiply it by the charge of a single electron, which is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. We end up with a charge of negative 8 times 10 to the negative 14th coulombs. Again, a lot of students will stop here and just say, well, I, I did my math. I used Q equals NE. It seems like I'm good to go. But realize, well, is this, is this the right math? Yes, it is, but only for part of it. So we just found out the charge of 500,000 electrons, but that's not what the question's asking. It's asking after I've collected another 500,000 electrons. So meaning I had some to begin with. Now what's my new charge? Well, that's what I had to begin with. 
this is what I have after collecting those 500,000. So together, I end up with a total new charge of this plus what I just solved for gives me this negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 13th coulombs. All right, so this right here is my absolute final answer. That's what would be uh, that would that's what would be correct on a test or a quiz if that's what we were doing here. All right, let's take a look at number two. All right, it says we rub our socks on the carpet and develop a charge of negative 7.2 times 10 to negative 14th. How many excess electrons did your body collect? All right, so I know my Q. That's what that's what this is. Um, my charge of a single electron I know is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. It kind of looks like a negative 14th in here, but it's a negative 19th. So then let's get n by itself. A lot of times students sometimes, I don't want to say a lot of times, but students tend to get stuck here sometimes and say, do I divide by negative 7.2 times 10 to the negative 14th or do I divide by negative 1.6 or is it, you know, that I divide this number by that or this number by that? Take it one step at a time. How do I get this variable by itself? Don't worry if it's, do I divide this number by this number or this number by this number? Worry about how do I get n by itself? Well, currently n is multiplied by negative, negative 19th. Well, I need to do the opposite to get n by itself. So what's the opposite of multiplication by this number? It would, be, of course, be division by that same number. So I divide this side by negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. But remember, if I did it to one side, I have to do it to the other side. So rather than guessing which way do I do my division, look at how do I isolate my variable. All right, so in this case, it now, the math works out for us and tells us negative 7.2 times 10 to the negative 14th will be divided by negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. All right, and when we do that, we come out with 450,000 electrons. Um, in this case, the unit is electrons because we're talking about how many electrons did we, did we collect, how many excess electrons. Um, another way of putting that 450,000 would be 4.5 times 10 to the fifth electrons. So either this answer or this answer would be correct. Both are equally acceptable. Right, what happens to those electrons when you touch a friend who's neutral? Some of them are going to discharge. Right, so if if this is, you know, you, you're a box apparently, but um, yeah, that's cool. And let's say you've got a whole bunch of protons, right? You got, you got a whole bunch of positive charges. You've got a whole bunch of excess electrons. So right now it would be neutral. Right now it would be in excess, so it looks like we have four extra electrons, right? Three of those electrons cancel out three of those um, protons or three of those negatives cancel out three of those positives, so it leaves us over with four extra electrons. Well, if we go to, to touch a friend next to us, some of those electrons are going to jump off onto our friend if they're neutral. Not all of them, because they're going to space out as much as possible. It's almost like diffusion in a way, if you remember that from biology. But only a couple of them are going to end up jumping off here uh, so that they, they spread to be approximately half and half of the excess electrons. All right, number three, you remove your fleece, gain 27,000 electrons. What's your, what's your new charge? So we're gaining 27,000 electrons. That is our N. Each electron, again, has negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs of charge. And the reason we're using that scientific notation is because this number is extraordinarily small. The charge of an electron, if we were to round it off in normal everyday math, would be zero. But, of course, we know it, it can't be zero. Otherwise, matter wouldn't exist. Things would not stick together. Matter would not stick together um, from, from negative to positive. So... It, there is a charge there, but it's just very, very small. But when we're dealing with electrons, think we're never dealing with one electron. We're always dealing with trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions of electrons. So that's why this number is small. And even though it's small, it is significant because we're dealing with so many. All right, so going back to the problem, though, each one of those electrons has this charge. We've got 27,000 of them. Multiply the two, the two together, and we end up with negative 4.32 times 10 to the negative 15th coulombs. So we have a negative charge, which makes sense, 
because we gain 27,000 electrons and each one of those electrons is negative. All right, so I'm gonna take a look at number four again here. It says you're sitting on bleachers and scoot over causing you to lose 35,000 electrons. What is your net charge? So we haven't really done a problem like this where we've actually dealt with losing electrons, but it's it's very similar to gaining electrons. The only difference is you're, you're getting rid of them rather than, rather than hanging on to them. Okay, so if we use our formula, Q equals NE, because that is what's dealing with total charge or charge quantization, we can still use this formula despite the fact that we're losing electrons rather than gaining them. Um, so I don't know what my net charge is. Right, that's what Q is. I do know that I'm losing. I highlighted, highlighted losing there because that's key. 35,000 electrons. So the N would be losing 35,000. So use the negative there to, uh, to denote losing. We know the charge of one electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. So then from there, go ahead and multiply out negative 35,000 times negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. We know that that will be a positive number. And if you throw it in your calculator, you come out with 5.6 times 10 to the negative 15th. And that's in coulombs. Remember, net charge is C for coulombs. A couple other ways you could do this. You could do this where you don't make the N negative 35,000. You could just leave it as is. Do the problem, and you'll come out with negative 5.6 times 10 to the negative 15th, but realize, well, we're not, we're not gaining them, we're losing them, so just get rid of the negative in the end. A little bit backwards, the first way would be better. Um, another way you could do this is say, well, I know the charge of a proton is the same as the charge of an electron except opposite sign. So instead of using this part as E, you could almost think of it as Q equals NP for proton, um, or just get rid, of the, get rid of the negative for the E, and you'd end up with 35,000 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. The negative 19th will still stay in there because that's part of the scientific notation, denoting that we've got 18 zeros in front of the one. It's not actually giving us a negative number, right? The the negative in front of that number is actually giving us the negative number, but the negative up here is what's um, telling us how many places we've got to move this decimal to the left. So three different ways. I'm sure there's more ways than that even to get the same answer, but um, in the end, you should come out with 5.6 times 10 to the negative 15th, and that is positive, not negative. So you could have a positive in front of it or just leave it as is. A lot of times in this unit, I like to throw the positive in front of it just to show that you know, we're dealing with something that's a positive charge, not a negative charge. But if you left that off, it's no big deal. All right, so let's take a look at B then. What would happen if we came near the sweater mentioned in number one? Um, the sweater from question one, if you look up at the top of your page, was negative 8 times 10 to the negative 13th coulombs. We don't honestly care that it is however many coulombs. We just care that it was negative. Because in this case, the sweaters are, we're, positive, right? So after scooting off the, the bleachers, <laughs> it's a terrible drawing of a human being. Um, it's like the Hulk with, I don't know, he's semi-happy, but he just scooted off the bleachers. Let's give him some feet. Maybe that's why I wasn't so happy. Um, but he scoots off, he ends up developing a positive charge. And remember, he's not gaining positives. He can only lose negative. So not to say that there's not going to be any negative charges, there's still going to be some left behind. But overall, in this case, he is positive. Right? We know a specific number, but we don't care about that. We just care that he's positive. And the sweater mentioned in number one was negative overall. So if we now have a, a sweater here, <laughs> And it can't gain or lose protons, but we know that it just it must have gained a whole lot of electrons if it's if it's negative. Well, this is negative overall. This is positive overall. So when these two come together, the the sweater would be slightly attracted to um, the big green giant over here. All right.
Number five, if you pull your blanket off, develop a charge of that. Negative six times 10 to the negative 15th. How many electrons did we gain? Well, each, each electron always has that charge of negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. Uh, in this case, we have a charge of negative six point negative six times. So now the question is, how do we get n by which number do I divide by? The question is, how do I get n by itself? Let the math tell you which number to divide by. So to get rid of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th, we divide by it. Right? If I do it to one side, I've got to do it to the other. So then I end up with... 37,500, or 3.75 times 10 to the fourth. 37,500 electrons. All right, see you guys later.